Now, before you go straight for that dislike button, I actually watched this video in its entirety to get the full picture because there was a lot of interesting material to explore. While I'm inclined to agree with critics on nearly every aspect of Suicide Squad's problems, taking it at face value, I had a really good time. It's not the edgy, villain-centric masterpiece that fans had hoped for, but honestly, if you give into its zaniness, it's serviceable summer popcorn fun that simply delivers a silly action movie and nothing more. Now, I have a sweet spot for subversive films, so I more naturally swayed and overlook its problems by enjoying the film for what it is, rather than what most of us want it to be. In a film like this, I saw two potential outcomes. One was a more complex character study that tried to uncover the humanity deeply embedded within villains, and the other was a chaotic action movie without the substance. The outcome is this weirdly stitched together amalgamation of the two that lacks consistency, but does enough to keep your attention, at least for me. Rather than do a traditional review, in this video I want to analyse the film's core elements and explore what didn't work because I find it rather interesting that a film as problematic as this can still be entertaining to a relative degree. If I was to grade it, 3 stars is a perfectly fair summary of my perspective. Now of course, from here, this video is going to contain spoilers, so if you're still on the fence about seeing it, just consider your expectations and what kind of film you want it to be. If you want it to be silly fun, you're in luck. If you want it to be an emotional character study, go watch Deadpool because it kind of did it better. As always, make sure to leave your own thoughts on the film in the comments below, and let's get started. The film's weakest element is undoubtedly the script. I mean, bluntly speaking, the writing is appalling. It's even cringeworthy at times. There is a lot of forced dialogue, and some of the delivery just felt unnatural. I find this to be particularly prominent with Harley Quinn, who had the worst dialogue by far, and every attempt at comedy fell flat, especially from her end. David Ayer is a very serious writer. Training Day, End of Watch, Sabotage, Fury, every script he's written I feel lacks charisma. There's not enough personality injected into the script to have an effect on the audience, and for comic book material, that's a bad thing. Someone like Joss Whedon can pen a good script because Whedon infuses a lot of his own emotions and perceptions into the characters, hence they feel more believable and complex. Whereas when Ayer does it, everything feels more artificially placed to hit emotional beats that don't always work. For example, Deadshot's relationship with his daughter services his humanity, but we as the audience don't feel the same sympathetic attachment because we are simply told by the film to invest without ever being given a valid reason to do so. In Deadpool, they made you care about his wife, hence you wanted him to succeed, but with Deadshot, it doesn't really help us connect with him, but rather forces unjustified weight behind his character. In fact, the dynamic between Rick Flagg and June was far more believable because we actually sense how June's possession by Enchantress causes strain to their relationship. It just doesn't help that there's no characterization behind June or that Rick ever shows much of a caring side. Air would have been better exploring their relationship more because at least it would have had a more central focus for the plot. It's a completely missed opportunity to add a personal stake to the squad's objective, and could have concluded with a much more emotional pull. The issue is that Ayer never seems to make up his mind what direction he wants to take with the story. The film has a narrative template that works on a basic level. Here's the gang and now let's throw them into a dangerous scenario and see what they can do. There is a very unceremonious nature to the entire film. Despite the numerous times the characters are forced to clarify that this is a potential end of the world scenario, you never feel that sense of urgency. In fact, even when the stakes are at their highest, everything remains very nonchalant and unmoving. I understand these characters don't care because as the film also forcefully reminds us through dialogue, they're the bad guys. But for the audience to feel involved, we need to sense that danger. By all means, the characters can humorously show no concern, but the audience should be in a more anxious position to make the threat more terrifying. There is no sense of parlousness or vulnerability, and when the squad finally meet the villain, that threat is never realised. Enchantress as the villain was completely fine, but when you first see her, she is genuinely sinister. Her transformation from June is visually provocative, and her beady eyes and ghostly appearance is extremely effective. But once they make her the villain, she loses her entire fear factor because of the visual transition. I understand the idea was to make her seem more empowered and rejuvenated with a more cleaner appearance, but the film really could have done with that horror element that was initially coming across. 
in the same way her brother is just as ineffective. But the biggest issue with him is that once the squad finally confront him in the final showdown, he becomes a lot less powerful to help convenience the plot, and thus it breaks the illusion of his menacing nature that came before it. It reminded me of the Mummy movies in a way, where when you first see Imhotep, he's genuinely terrifying and it essentially becomes a vengeful horror movie, but once he's regained his strength, he becomes an extremely dull villain and the film loses its steam. X-Men Apocalypse actually had the same issue where I find Apocalypse to be really menacing until he begins to speak and then he just becomes the generic bad guy. With Suicide Squad, it never builds the threat behind Enchantress enough and like with June and Rick's relationship, it becomes another missed opportunity to add a unique element to the movie. Like I said with Ayer's writing style, there is an artificiality that negates any emotion the film attempts to have. The visual style feels just as forced as the writing. I will admit I really like the style Ayer was trying to go for, but I don't think it ever reached its full potential. The CGI was really nice, especially Enchantress and El Diablo's transformations, but when I consider the film on a technical level, it's an inconsistent mess. The film doesn't know whether it wants to be fun or brooding, and it never finds a balance to help stabilise the rest of the film. A lot of critics have said this, but there's these weird out of place music video montages that feel like they're trying to force unneeded energy into the film. Since the writing lacks humour, trying to lighten the tone with Eminem and such just furthers the awkward insincerity that plagues the film. In other words, while I admire David Ayer as a director, I don't think his personality fits this type of film, and watching it all I could think of was how insane a job James Gunn would do with this material. James Gunn, who wrote and directed Slither, Super and of course Guardians of the Galaxy, understands how to maintain a distinct cinematic personality, such as using the 80s music to help accentuate and add context to Star-Lord's characterization. The film has a lot of stylistic issues, especially in the editing department. For example, during a Harley Quinn flashback, the use of jump cuts to accentuate Joker's psychotic personality felt completely unwarranted. When Nolan did the Joker, he let Heath Ledger do his work and carried the tension with a lot of minimalism, whereas Ayer forces hyper stylization when Jared Leto is more than capable of the performance. In fact, the Joker's reveal in the original trailer is superior to that of the film because of the absence of music and stylistic effects and carried purely by Leto's menacing performance. In short, it's tonally inconsistent, jumping between hyperactive and stern, and just as the film begins to find its footing, it's already at the end. I'd argue this to be the most inconsistent element of the film that highlights a lot of the fundamental problems. As far as I'm concerned, Will Smith carries the weight of the film along with Margot Robbie. Smith just has a screen presence and charm that's difficult not to like, and even though he's nothing special, Deadshot is the only character in the entire film other than El Diablo that comes even remotely close to being likeable. Harley Quinn's backstory suffers from the same problems as Deadshot, but she suffers from having a complex background that the film never has time to thoroughly explore. In fact, for the most part, the film's lack of focus on its backstories means that it gives you fragments of human qualities that never seem to resonate to achieve anything impactful. I actually felt that the film suffered from trying to cover Deadshot and Harley Quinn that the other characters felt largely neglected, especially Rick Flagg and much later El Diablo. Even when the film tried to squeeze Katana's tragedy into the mix, again, it's forced and incoherently delivered. At least with Killer Croc and Captain Boomerang, they know they're out of place, and their neglect came off as rather comedic as they seem to accept their position as purely expendable and nothing more, especially given that the film randomly included Slipknot just to prove a plot point that I find myself laughing at in embarrassment for his character. The way I see it, if more time was spent on cleaning up where the film wanted to place its emphasis, it could cut down some of the main conflict to explore certain characters in better and more engaging detail. Think of how the central conflict of Deadpool was built around his origin story with consistent pacing. Here the film throws out fragments of information at such a fast pace and gives us very little time to digest that everything feels arbitrarily placed and stagnates the film's momentum. I'm only including this because Joker always seems to be the hot topic of conversation for some reason despite the fact he's not relevant to the narrative, but I actually liked his inclusion. Joker seems to be here to give us a taste of the direction they want to take with his character in the new DC universe, and I can understand how this might polarise some people and I feel like audiences response to him will influence his character down the line of future films. He comes off as more of a gangster than a menacing psychopath, and while Leto definitely does his job, his placement within the film doesn't give him a chance to ever shine, and some of his mannerisms feel a little bit too elaborate even for Joker's standards. 
His motive to get Harley Quinn back was said by many critics to be redundant, and while initially I would agree, I find him to be a rather humorous element that wasn't all that well translated within the film. I felt that he was there purely to annoy us with his selfish reasoning, while remaining completely oblivious to the underplayed end of the world scenario that was supposed to be happening. It was honestly the funniest part of the film when you give this context. Here's the end of the world, but Joker's more concerned with saving Harley Quinn. He does not care, nor does he even know what's going on. He's just doing his thing, and I thought it was actually very funny, especially the ending where I find myself with a genuine smile of joy on my face. He just looked like a happy puppy to see Harley, and I was all for it, even if the attempts to make him terrifying were completely nullified as a result. I think if they didn't mention Joker at all during their marketing, and his only appearance was right in that final shot, that would be the mic drop moment that everyone would be talking about. So again, Joker feels like a significantly missed opportunity that does not translate into the film. Yeah, the film is incredibly problematic, but really, on some level, it's completely harmless. I appreciated its wackiness and at no point did I take it seriously, and thus I enjoyed it without getting uptight about its story. My only real frustration as an experience was that it feels like it's holding back from its edginess. Every time it wanted to show us something violent, it would cut away. It's like a child that wants to be the big man, but every attempt at being bold results on getting a slap on the wrists by its parents at DC. Its real problem is how safe it becomes, and I can sense the studio tampering with it in an attempt to make it as inoffensive as possible, but ultimately Ultimately, its lack of confidence is more insulting than anything. This is a film that could have been something special, but I'm not butthurt by what it became. It's a summer blockbuster and nothing more. It's a film that could have been more complex and surprising, but really, when you look at it for what it is this moment, maybe we shouldn't try to overstimulate the idea of what everybody wanted it to be.